My name is Griffin and I teach Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. And this video is about posterior pelvic tilt and how to correct it through a few simple exercises and how to adjust your practice accordingly. Posterior pelvic tilt is kind of a chronic condition where instead of being in a neutral position, the hips are rolled back. So the pelvis is collapsing back, which is especially noticeable in a seated position like this, where there's kind of this rounding appearance to the spine, and it feels like you're falling backwards all the time and you can't really reach forward. In a standing position, that more commonly looks like just kind of a flatness across the lower back and a tucking of the tailbone in, which affects how the spine is able to interact with the legs. And the reason that you might want to spend you know, the time exploring this and correcting it is that it may be painful for you now or in the future, especially as you age, it can really contributes to the kind of dowager's hump where you end up in this position with the head really far forward and down and that rounded appearance to the spine, which can be quite painful and even a little bit debilitating you'll no longer be able to stand fully upright. And it also has to do, like I mentioned a second ago, with being able to use the legs effectively and being able to have the whole body working as a unit. So it's worth a little bit of effort in trying to correct. And I'm gonna discuss two simple exercises that you can do today and uh, in the future to start to work on creating some movement there. And for some people, it does have to do with muscular length. It has to do with flexibility a little bit. And it also can have to do with the ligaments inside the pelvis, and it can have to do with the way the bones fit together inside the pelvis. For example, the way the thigh bone, the femur, uh, meets the hip bone. Sometimes the bones rub on each other in a way that prevents kind of the tipping forward. And the good news with yoga actually is that you're not only lengthening and stretching the muscles, but if you're practicing yoga effectively, it's creating more space inside your joints. So through the application of things like the bandhas, through pushing down into the ground and creating a lift and expansion through your body, you can move the bones in your body, you can adjust the ligaments. So don't only think about in terms of getting more flexible, but we're actually trying to restructure the body so that the way that the bones articulate together might shift over time and that's something that's very possible through mindful yoga practice. So the first exercise we're going to do is a modification of one of the sun salutation positions. It's a little bit like downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Shanasana. And you will just come into it like this and for the, someone with posterior pelvic tilt, downward facing dog, might be something like this, where the spine's really rounded, it's hard for the heels to come down or the legs to straighten and they feel really restricted and held up away from the floor. Versus our normal, kind of ideal alignment of downward facing dog being kind of that straight long spine that's not really an option right now. And so you end up somewhere here instead. So I wouldn't work directly with downward facing dog, but instead the next position, the preparation to jump forward. So in the traditional count of the sun salutation, five breaths, downward facing dog, and then crouch, look forward, and hop. And so that's what we're gonna break down is that crouching position that's kind of hiding in there between. So instead of your downward facing dog, you're gonna lift your heels up, bend your knees, look forward between your hands, and focus on lifting the tailbone up towards the ceiling. So the hip creases right here are really deepening and pulling back and up. You know, push through the hands. Notice how my arms are lengthening, my upper body's lengthening, getting really long. Hips are lifting up towards the ceiling, and I'm not trying to straighten my legs. And just stay here for five breaths, for 10 breaths, you can work on increasing it if it's feeling really good. And you'll just stay there and hop forward or sit down. And you can do that 
after your normal downward facing dog if you like. Or you can, for the sake of exploration, just replace downward facing dog with that position for some time. Just to work on loosening and creating a little bit more strength and length in that position. Or you can even just do it separate from your practice, just through your day and then you have a few minute break at work or at home. You can just practice that position for a few minutes and then you have your other practice separately. And so the idea there is we're trying to get away from that really restricted flexion position. So flexion is that rounding the back to somewhere where there can be a little bit more movement. Because if there's not movement, if there's not engagement, really it's not an effective position to be in. So if downward facing dog is already too far, too much range of motion, this is how we modify that same position in order to make it a little bit more dynamic. So that you can have the breath alive in the body and you can feel that length and expansion happening as a process. The other position that I would recommend doing is the wide leg standard st standing forward fold. Prasada to Padmasana. And I'll show a variation of that as well. So instead of the normal count where you might be rounding your back and coming down like this, I recommend hands on the legs, either right below or right above the knees, pressing in and make this action of trying to arch your back. I'll dramatize it a little bit. So pulling the back, the spine in, arching. A little bit of extension as you look forward. And that's just the movement you're gonna play with. It's just arching so that the hip creases again are drawing in and up. Tailbone and sitting bones lifting to the ceiling. And you can, if you want, take your hands down to the floor like I did or up on a couple blocks or they can just stay on the hips. So I was just had my hands down because that's more comfortable for me to show you. And the actual movement you'll get if you have a severe tilt in your pelvis is not going to be that much. So you're going to be probably somewhere like this, the back pretty rounded, looking forward, and maybe you'll get just an inch or two of length like this. So it won't be too noticeable, but over time, you'll start to be able to move from the sacrum. So imagine the sacrum, which is this triangular bone right here, right at the base of the spine, lifting towards your head, and that's the impetus for the back to arch. So the muscles of the back contract, lift the sacrum up, and you focus on lengthening, getting some more space in your spine and stretching out, opening the front of the body. And you'll notice that's a big contrast to the rounded position where the front of the body is really sh shrunken in and closed. Instead, lift, open, and you stay there for a few breaths. And then you go on with your practice. And again, that can be part of the sequence as you're practicing it, or it can be its own exercise at another time. And the other thing that I would recommend is actually that you really back off the full forward folds. So in addition to doing these exercises, I'd recommend not practicing it the way you've been practicing it already. So for the standing forward fold, sometimes I see people trying to kind of like round and like walk, their, bring their head back between their legs, but there's really not any movement of the hips. And that action of rounding the back so deeply really reinforces the problem. And it doesn't solve it. You're not getting more flexible. That rounded position of the spine goes with the tucked tailbone, the posterior tilt. So if you have a posterior tilt already, that's just making problems worse. It's not solving anything, which is especially noticeable in the forward folding positions. So your tailbone's kind of restricted, tucked under, and you're reaching forward, maybe you've grabbed onto your toes. And this is just making the posterior tilt worse. There really needs to be movement from the hips, lifting up. So if grabbing the big toes isn't an option, if this automatically makes your back really rounded, forget about it. You can have your hands on your shins, you can have your hands on the floor, stay in Dandasana for a while maybe, pushing with the hands, use the upper body and tip 
lifting the sacrum forward. So again, lifting it up towards the head and pretend like you're arching the back. So drawing the spine a little bit deeper into the body and sitting upright. And I can imagine that might be very frustrating potentially if you're used to doing something like this, where you're just curling in to have the perception of being so much farther away from your legs might be annoying. But really this is bringing you much closer to your goal of being able to do a full forward fold than dragging the head down. Because even if you were successful at getting your head down to your knees, you're not really any closer to doing the full forward fold. This is a position where there's a lot of flexion and the forward folds are trying to teach how to cultivate length. And so the way, the method to come into a forward fold, Paschimottanasana for example, is to fold belly first, then ribs, then head down. And so it doesn't really make much sense to me to try and come into that position by bringing your head down first. That's reversing the order of events and that's not going to be effective. So instead, just focus on that first step tipping forward and bringing the navel down towards the thighs. So you end up here, spine still straight, and over a period of time, you fall forward a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, until you finally get down. So don't discount that process. Just stay with it. Keep that fold happening, folding like a piece of paper, just right at the hip crease. One nice crease, the legs straight, the spine straight on the other side. So, I think that is a much better option than, I see sometimes people are tempted to like bend the knees and do something like this where you're pulling forward. And again, that isn't really working towards the goal that effectively. In this case, because it really deactivates the legs and defeats the kind of energy of the pose, which is legs reaching down, lengthen the spine, sitting bones down, and get tall, get long. So be patient and focus on the fundamental alignment of the pose rather than trying to imitate the appearance of the pose a little bit more closely. Just stay with that first stage, get tall, lengthen, and open up the front of the body. So if you notice that the shoulders are coming forward, and the chest is caving in, or your belly is really tense, if you can feel your abdominal muscles engaged, and you feel this kind of rounding and contracting, back off, lengthen, open up again, and stay there. Stay in a place where the front of the body is open, the spine is lengthening, and your breath is fluid. And then over time, that fluidity of the breath, that alignment of the body will create that softness you need. It will create that space you need inside your body to get a little bit deeper forward fold. And remember, it's not just about your hamstrings or something getting more flexible. What we're trying to do with this is to actually change how your body is interacting with the earth. So that that reaching down through the sitting bones creates a reciprocal force. That reaching down through the legs, that tugging up through the arms, creates more space inside your body. So not more flexible, but instead more spacious, open and that creates the potential for movement. So give those a try. And to recap, that's downward facing dog in that kind of crouching position. Lengthen and open the front of the body, pulling on the hands, lift the sitting bones up. And then the second one, which is maybe even a little bit easier and more accessible if you're very tight, is the standing forward fold. And you have your hands on your legs or on a pair of blocks and you're just lengthening, opening the front of your body, lengthening the spine, and not trying to bring your head down. Keep your head up, keep your gaze up, and just focus on that length, opening, and expansion. And then over time, perhaps that can transition to some of the seated postures of the primary series. But the seated postures are definitely more demanding, and so they should be approached later after the body's had a little bit of time to adjust. Thank you for practicing. And have a good day.